Welcome. We have an Asus TUF GeForce RTX 4080. In this episode, we will unbox the TUF RTX 4080, perform testing to obtain thermal, power, acoustic, and performance results with the stock air cooler. We will raise and lower the power limit, undervolt and overclock the card. We will then deshroud the card and measure it. Then detach the PCB for a closer look, measure the thermal pads, detach the fans and also measure them and end with the look at the disassembled cooler. This is the vector network. Let's begin. The ASUS TUF GeForce RTX 4080 is equipped with NVIDIA's AD103 4 nanometers graphics processor with an A plus 3 VRM architecture and 16 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory. What's in the box is a Velcro strap, 12 volt high power triple, 8 pin to 16 pin cable, and a GPU anti-sag brace. Next, let's take the card out of the box. Only paper left in there. And then let's take the card out of its anti-static bag. The card is over three and a half PCIe slots tall and combines a metal backplate with a die-cast aluminum cooler shroud. The two axial tech fans on the side spin counterclockwise while the center fan spins clockwise intended to minimize turbulence and maximize air dispersion through the heat sink. The shroud doesn't fully extend to cover the GPU and the sides are mostly exposed. Let's go ahead and peel the fan logos. We will measure the fans during the last portion of the teardown after we deshroud the card. Next, let's peel the plastic off of the backplate. The backplate incorporates a cutout into the design of the logo. The cutout represents half of the logo and allows for more airflow around that part of the heatsink. Next, we will thermally test the card on our test bench. But before that, let's quickly build it. If you would like to skip directly to the testing, fast forward 35 seconds or look in the description and follow the timestamp. For the test rig, we are using the MSI Mortar B650M and an AMD AM5 Ryzen 5 7600. Go ahead and drop the CPU in the new socket. We're going to cool the CPU with the Noctua NH-U9S. Add a Noctua AM5 Thermal Paste plastic guard and some NTH2 Thermal Paste. Install the cooler and then 32GB of Corsair DDR5 memory and an NVMe SSD for storage. Now we can drop our RTX 4080 in place and use the included triple 8-pin power cable. To obtain the results, 3 d Mark Speedway stress test was run on the open air test bench with ambient room temperatures at 21 degrees Celsius. For 100% power limit stock thermals, the GPU core temperature rose 30 degrees Celsius from an idle 28 to 58 degrees Celsius under load. The GPU memory temperature rose 38 degrees Celsius from an idle 32 to 70 degrees Celsius under load. Lowering the power limit to 70%, the GPU core and memory temperatures were 7 and 5 degrees Celsius lower, respectively, compared to 100% power limit. Undervolting the car to 0.95 millivolts and adding 135 MHz to the core to arrive at a targeted 2730 MHz core clock. GPU core and memory temperatures were 5 and 2 degrees Celsius lower respectively compared to 100% power limit. The overclocked model has a 2625 MHz core clock speed. Matching that by adding 90 MHz to the core, the GPU core and memory temperatures were 2 and 1 degree Celsius higher respectively compared to 100% power limit. Overclocking by increasing the power limit to 110% and adding 120 MHz to the core and 60 MHz to the memory clock, the GPU core and memory temperatures were 3 and 2 degrees Celsius higher respectively compared to 100% power limit. The 100% power limit is at 320 watts. Undervolting the card reduces the wattage from approximately 315 at 98% to 250 at 78%, a 65 watt or 20% reduction. This is comparable to the reduction in wattage at stock voltage, but limited to 80% power limit. At 100% power limit, the GPU fans ran at 31% and 33 decibels was recorded at a distance of 100 centimeters. Frames per second was recorded during 3D Mark Speedway stress test. As stock, the FPS was 72 and at 80% power limit, the FPS was 69. 3 FPS or 4% reduction. By using the included triple 8 pin power cable, the maximum power limit is 110%. For the record, using a 12 volt high power native Seasonic PSU cable, there is no change to the power limit. Stay tuned as the beginning of the teardown, which is the D shroud, is coming up right now.
The D shroud begins by removing A screws on the back plate. Keep in mind, all screws used on the ASUS TUF RTX 4080 are Phillips head screws. These screws attach the back plate to the aluminum pillar on the cooler shroud. Next, there are three more screws to remove on the I.O. bracket, and then two cables require unplugging. The first is the RGB LED cable, and the second is the fan cable. Now we can lift the shroud away from the heatsink, PCB, and back plate. The shroud contains a metal fan frame covered with anti-vibration tape. What's left is the PCB still fully attached to the heatsink and back plate. Let's go ahead and measure it. The height of this de-shrouded card is approximately less than 50 millimeters. Now let's continue with the teardown by removing two screws on the front of the PCB. This allows us to detach the metal back plate. Next, we have four more screws to remove around the GPU processor in a crisscross pattern to help alleviate tension more evenly. Once removed, the PCB can be lifted up and away from the heatsink. Thermal pads for the VRM are 2.5 mm thick. Taking the thermal pads off of the memory, and they measure 2 mm thick. There are five more screws on the I.O. bracket for this part of the teardown. Once removed, we can get a good look at the PCB. The ASUS TUF RTX 4080 has an 18-phase GPU and a 3-phase memory VRM design. The 4080 comes equipped with 16GB of GDDR6X memory chips, all on the front side with 8 2GB modules. The 4080's power architecture meets the PCIe Gen 5 standard with the 12 plus 4 pin ATX 12 volt high power power connector. The 4080 is equipped with DLSS 3 which has all the features of DLSS 2 and AI super resolution but now with also AI frame generation. Here is a comparison of the PCBs between the ASUS TUF GeForce RTX 4080 and the NVIDIA RTX 4090 Founders Edition. The RTX 4090 used the AD102 processor and is larger at 608 square millimeters compared to the RTX 4080 AD103 processor at 379 square millimeters. Here is a comparison of the cooler between the NVIDIA RTX 4090 Founders Edition and the ASUS TUF GeForce RTX 4080. Click on the link in the top right hand corner for RTX 4090 Founders Edition unboxing, thermal testing, and a teardown with the full cooler disassembly. Let's further tear down the card to identify and measure the fans. There are 9 screws to remove on this metal fan brace, and one additional screw hiding underneath the anti-vibration tape. Sneaky. With those removed, we can detach the shroud which houses the RGB LED module. The fans are now accessible and we can measure them with our caliper. They are the same size at approximately 104 millimeters in diameter. Next, there are four remaining screws to remove to detach one of the fans and they are 12 volt 55 amp champion brushless DC fans. Stay tuned for upcoming episodes as the plan is to install a water block on this ASUS TUF GeForce RTX 4080 and then install it into a water cooled PC build. Like the video by clicking the like button. If this is your first time here, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. This is the Vector Network. Please click on the bell for a notification when the next episode airs. Click on the links here for more videos, including video card and water cooling component teardowns, unboxings, and thermal testing for water cooled PC builds. Thank you, and I'll see you at the next episode.